Skolas, the traitor Kel, is the final boss of the level 35 Prison of Elders challenge mode. In this video, we'll go over the fight as a whole, as well as basic strategy for any burn related modifiers. If Skolas does not have a burn modifier, the strategy here should still work, just at a slower rate. First, let's go over subclasses. Titans, you're going to be a defender. Ward of Dawn is an incredibly valuable tool in this fight and can net you basically a free mind dismantle, an easier res, more damage, or instant cover. Warlocks, you'll likely be Sunsinger for Fireborn, which is encouraged and you know it's encouraged when I of all people say you should use it. It's a very good recovery tool and it's good for wiping Devouring Essence if you're in a jam. Hunters, Blade Dancer for invisibility makes resurrecting teammates and dismantling mines incredibly easy. Being able to go undetected across the chaos known as this battlefield is invaluable to this fight. The modifier will tend to dictate what your weaponry is. As of the making of this video, Skolas has had solar and arc burn modifiers, so it's unknown at the moment whether or not Skolas will ever have a non-burn modifier. Obviously, you should be using whatever your strongest elemental weapons are if Skolas has a burn modifier. Skolas himself only has a couple of mechanics. At the start of the fight, he will essentially be invulnerable to damage, blocking 99% of damage thrown at him. To disable his shield, you must destroy one of the two servitors on the field to break the bonds of his shield. These servitors are stealthed, but are not too hard to see. There are two spawn locations for these servitors, one in the back left of the area by the ramp, and the other on the opposite side. These servitors respawn somewhat frequently, but will not respawn if you're standing near their spawn location. They will also actively float away from you if you engage them. They can wander very far away from their initial spawn, as far as the other side of the map. When you kill a servitor, Skolas' bonds will break, enabling you to deal full damage to him for 20 seconds. If you kill another servitor while his bonds are weakened already, it will simply refresh the timer. It will not make you deal double the damage or anything like that. When Skolas reaches around 70 to 65% health, the bonds will be permanently broken and you will not have to kill servitors anymore. A servitor might still be left over, but killing it does not bring any additional benefits. At this point, Skolas introduces a new mechanic, Devouring Essence. He will target a player at random and give them this debuff, which lasts 30 seconds. After those 30 seconds, that player will die unless the debuff is removed. The only way to remove this debuff is by having another player pull it off of them. When removed in this way, the player who pulled off the debuff will now have it, and the person who used to have the Devouring Essence will now be immune for 40 seconds. This means that you can't just trade Devouring Essence back and forth in between two people. For example, if player A has the debuff, player B should take it off them. However, player A will still be immune by the time the debuff is going to expire on player B, therefore player C needs to take it from B. You must rotate the debuff around in this way to prevent deaths. If you die from Devouring Essence or die with Devouring Essence on your body, Skolas will target a new player within 30 seconds and give Devouring Essence to them, which makes recovering from deaths still possible but very time sensitive. At 50% of its health and then again at 10% of its health, you will have to disarm mines as your critical objective. This cannot be avoided in any way. You must do this or you will wipe, regardless of whether or not Skolas is alive or dead. The mines only spawn in three locations, but which locations they spawn in are random every single time. The locations for the mines are all the way on the left, all the way on the right, and then the mid-right on top of a platform. During the entirety of the fight, you'll be having enemies, which I'll be calling ads for the rest of the video, spawning from specific doorways and spawning certain enemies from each doorway. These ads spawn every 90 seconds and are not connected to Skolas' health at all, so killing these ads quickly gives you more time for other things to handle in the fight, namely dismantling mines and damage on Skolas himself. Learning these spawn patterns and timers is crucial to making this fight less stressful. We'll take a look at the spawns and how to take advantage of them later in the video. The overall strategy my group uses is a strategy that does not rely on any particular combination of weapons or class makeup. However, having more of a certain class or running with a particular composition might make the fight harder or easier depending on the class makeup and the modifier involved with the fight. Here's how my group plays it. Upon starting the fight, everyone runs off to the left and runs to the very far back of the area where the servitor first spawns. Kill the servitor and then start damage as quickly as possible on Skolas. 
His teleports and your damage may dictate how you proceed. There are a couple of options. The first is to just burst him down below 50% to trigger the mines. However, if not done quickly enough, you will have to deal with adds, which will definitely make mine dismantling much more difficult, as navigating a fresh field of adds can be treacherous. This option can also be very inconsistent, and I've seen and been a part of many attempts that fail right at this part. The next is if you don't get him below 50% to trigger the mines, or even if you do not break his bonds, like you're seeing this clip here. A good way of dealing with this happening is to just rotate to the other side and camp the door where the adds spawn. Having two people camp the opposite side door will enable you to just kill a lot of adds right as they come out of the spawn door, which is great. Not only that, but Skolas will also start making an effort to teleport to you, which will free up your original position. Be mindful of the melee captain that spawns to the left though. After killing a lot of adds from this door, you should retreat back to your original position, as Skolas should be rotated out, and the adds from that side of the arena will have also rotated, giving you some time to recover. This works for Arcburn, and I suspect it will work for Solarburn as well, just be very cautious. The issue here is that you might not have a Servitor to kill, in which case someone should go hunt down a Servitor. If things ever get too crazy in the fight in general, or if school loss gets in your face too much, your team should quickly rotate to the other side of the area to have the boss and all of the adds slowly trickle to that side, just like you saw in this clip. Kill as many adds as you can, then rotate back to your starting position when it feels safe, which should give you some breathing room from Skull Loss and allow you to finish killing adds, reset Skull Loss's position, or prepare for a new wave of adds. Adds from the start position work as follows. You'll have three shanks spawn out of a door very close to you. Then about 5 to 10 seconds later, you'll have six vandals and a captain spawn from the interior doors. Three vandals up close and three vandals far away. The captain will always spawn in the closer door. One person should focus on killing all of these adds as soon as they spawn, and this person should focus on adds for the majority of the fight while the other two focus on the boss as much as possible. The other two players should help kill adds when appropriate, but should prioritize boss damage whenever possible. Clearing those adds the moment that they spawn makes the next minute or so of the fight much easier to handle, because adds from the other side of the map will slowly move over to your side, which makes them easier to take down. You'll also have the option of straight burning Skull Loss to 50% and triggering the first set of mines. If you time it well, you'll have Shanks spawning around the time the mines are being triggered, but it should be enough time for your team to spread out and capture mines. If you take too long though, then adds will be spawning at the same time as the mines, and chances are you won't have the ability to focus on adds, mines, Skull Loss, and Devouring Essence. Skull Loss is also very likely to be right on top of you during this time, so you'll need to do a little bit of kiting, or at the very least dropping a Ward of Dawn if you get a mine to spawn right next to you. It's still totally possible to do this with some good movement, but if you want to burn them, you need to do it right off the bat so that you can actually get into position for mines. The best position Skull Loss can possibly be in is actually in the exact path that you probably will take to go to the other side of the area. My team's ridiculous callout for when Skull Loss is in this position is called Money. Oh, he's down right below Eight, us. Seven, oh, he's in Money, six, he's in Money. Five, four. Burn him, burn him, burn him, burn him. The reason this position is so advantageous is because he struggles to hit you with any of his blasts while you have a clear shot of hitting him. However, him patrolling into this area is rare. Most of the time, he will patrol the interior sections of the area. Do not rely on Skull Loss patrolling into the Money section too often. If you opted to kill adds before tipping Skull Loss below 50%, well, now it's time to trigger the first set of mines. If he teleports on top of you, it is very possible to kite him around the area just in case you get your first mine on that side. This would be a good time to use Ward of Dawn if you have it. However, power dismantling, aka having all of your teammates dismantling a mine, will dismantle the mine in about 2 seconds, so it can be worth just having everyone stand on the mine to power dismantle and then running away to the next mines to not have to burn a Ward of Dawn. However, you need to be wary of the Devouring Essence, as any sort of strategy that involves splitting up might conflict with your Essence passing. Here's an example of how a splitting up strategy might go. Good, good. Uh, 10 seconds on me, Luce. Okay. I'm on top of you. Tell me when. Four, three, two. Please be one. here. It's A. Uh, I'm going into the. Spell. Okay. Uh, actually, Dado you... needs Are... to go with you. Yeah, Hopefully, I'm coming. I'm coming. You just turn back around. Hopefully, it goes to A, I guess. Or, uh, our close side. Yep. I'm here. I'm here. What's your time? 
15. I can get okay. the next one with solo. Go back to him now. Okay. Okay. He's on me. He's on me. Gra uh, to lose, I need to grab it. I know, come to my bubble. Come to my down. bubble. Six, five. There you go. Where's the next oh, one? It's, it's, it's over it's, here. It's, it's far. It's, it's far. My side. Yep. Running, running, running. Uh. I. Uh, to lose, go, go trade with Leopard. Go trade. Trade? Trade. Leopard, come to me. No. You come. You have to come yeah, to me. Yeah, the the know, next know, one's here. I'm coming. I'm coming. Almost got this. Leopard, we're gonna have to meet in the middle. I'm 10 seconds. Leopard, go, go. You're in the middle. Oh my god. Yeah, go, go, go. We're not I gonna make it. Solo. We're good. Oh, hold B. It's square. <gasps> oh my god, run. I'm so weak. I'm so weak. I'm dead. Okay, okay, okay. Now, if I had communicated better that Leopard needed to come to me as opposed to just sitting there on the mine, this would have gone a lot smoother, but we did end up recovering from this position. Ad control is a major key to victory in this fight, and having one person dedicated full time to killing them has worked out very well for us. I would also encourage at least one person to have a shotgun, probably the person on the ads, because the shrapnel launcher and melee captains can very easily mess up your run, and being able to one shot them is incredibly handy for both solar and arc burn. After the first wave of mines, continue the fight rotating the devouring essence, rotating yourselves, killing ads, and working on skull loss as much as possible. Let's take a look at a clip that gives us a clear field of enemies as we dismantle mines and eventually kill Skolas. We have just rotated back to our start position after recovering and clearing a lot of ads on the opposite side, so Skolas is currently rotating back over to us. We can see the ads spawn and start taking them out directly as they spawn on the opposite side. You can also have another player taking out ads as they spawn on the side that you're on as well. But since we've killed a lot of adds, right now is a very good time to tip Skolas, which we do, while the final adds are being cleaned up. Mines are triggered, but the field is wide open and much safer to traverse. I highly suggest trading the essence at mines as opposed to on the run because it's not as panicked. By the time we're back to our original position from dismantling mines, a new set of adds is spawning, and Skolas is not around us at all. We're able to clear out a lot of the adds as they're just spawning out of the doorways, and Skolas ends up walking right back to us at the perfect time. We just end up burning him down and killing him because we got lucky with our mine spawn. If our mine did not spawn here, we would have needed to send one person away to dismantle the first mine, but we were free to damage on Skolas because of control on those adds. While this overall strategy works for all compositions, depending on your composition and the modifier, you may need to change things up to make the fight as easy as possible for you to complete. A defender and two blade dancers have great mind dismantling abilities and a good way to recover with invisibility. Two sunsingers and a titan have good ways of getting out of problems with devouring essence and otherwise recovering. Three titans can ward of dawn their way out of most problems. With Solar Burn, you only need to look out for two things, Skolas and Fallen Captains. Unfortunately, this is easier said than done. Your biggest problem will be drive-bys by Shrapnel Launcher Captains, which sometimes you can do absolutely nothing about. Skolas also becomes significantly more of a threat, being able to two-shot you with the Scorch Cannon, assuming you're level 34. This means cutting him around the start area while he's in your face is much harder to do, so you'll have to opt for doing a full rotation to the other side of the arena whenever he gets close. Adds won't be as large of a threat, but captains will still be the absolute bane of your existence and cause a lot of instant deaths, some unpreventable. With Arcburn, you need to look out for literally everything else, especially melee captains, which will one-shot you with their melee, making them almost as dangerous as shrapnel captains. However, with Arcburn, the odds of being instant killed from full to zero are much less, and the fight feels more in your control. Unfortunately, this makes traversing the map much more dangerous if done at the same time as adds spawn. Overall, this fight is not about damaging Skolas. This fight is about patience. The most important thing in this fight is the ability to recover and the ability to deal with adds. Obviously, not dying is going to be great, but deathless runs of Skolas are pretty rare right now. Being able to roll with the punches is going to be a great asset, as there are some things that you are just completely unable to control. Things like Skolas' teleports, general movements of adds after they've spawned, etc. 
Skolas teleporting one direction could make the fight a lot easier. Teleporting a different direction changes the fight and the patterns completely. The modifier also plays a role and might slightly change up your strategy. But patience is a virtue, and as long as you don't rush the fight or force anything to happen, you will eventually bring him down. That is your overall Skolas strategy guide. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you next time.